Hey, what's up? My name is Nick and welcome to Angry Reviews. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Apple M1 computers and these 4K capture cards. We're going to see if they work with a computer and if using a USB or Thunderbolt dock makes any difference. We're going to be testing out these two capture cards, which are both capable of 4K 30 frames per second, the Elgato Camlink 4K and the Avermedia Live Gamer Ultra. And for connectivity, I'm going to be testing out this cheap under $50 USB hub, which is USB 3, 3.1 Gen 1, and a Thunderbolt dock. This goes up to 40 gigabits, while this goes only up to 5 gigabits. See if that makes a difference. And finally, the apps that I'm going to be using to test these capture cards are OBS, both the Streamlabs and Stream Elements version, and the Telestream's ScreenFlow and Wirecast. Wirecast is the only one out of the bunch which currently runs natively on the Apple's M1 ARM architecture. And jumping straight to it, you're looking at the Camlink 4K running through this Thunderbolt dock using a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port through my 4K 30 frames per second camera. I'm using OBS to record this and I'm going to put the settings up on screen right now. And this is partial color mode. And now you're looking at the exact same 4K settings but with the Live Gamer Ultra. And this is partial color mode. Same 4K settings running through the USB 3.0 hub. And now the same thing but with the cam link. And I'm also going to be testing out this USB A to USB C 3.1 adapter. Yeah, and although it looks kind of weird, it works. 4K settings again. Oh, there we go. This also works. All right, so now it's all fun and games when you're recording for a few seconds, but what happens when you're recording for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so? Do you start getting dropped frames, some lags, anything in between? Well, let's find out. All right, so I ran these tests multiple times using both of the capture cards and both of the docks on all of the apps that I've mentioned earlier. And instead of wasting your time making you watch through all of these tests, I'm just gonna sum it all up. First of all, 4K 30 frames per second on these M1 Max works, but there were problems and I'll get to those in just a second. For now, let me just say that the, probably the most important thing to do is to keep your software updated. Uh, since OS X Big Sur 11.13.1, I've noticed a lot better stability overall in general. And since the Apple's ARM architecture is pretty new to OS X, uh, every update could be you know, the deciding factor between your software running smoothly or getting glitches and lost frames. Then I found absolutely no difference between the more expensive Thunderbolt dock, the cheaper USB-C hub, or the USB-A to USB-C adapter. They all work exactly the same because the capture cards themselves use only USB 3 capped out at 5 gigabits. However, this thing might be a bottleneck as the end over here only receives 5 gigabits. So everything that is coming into this dock is shared, whether it be external hard drives, external screens, if you have more than one device plugged in, it might limit the amount of data or bandwidth your capture card has. So in some cases, these can be your bottleneck, but in most cases, you'll be fine. So am I telling you that these capture cards work flawlessly on the new M1 Max? No, unfortunately not. And each one has their own set of problems. Um, personally, I have a problem with the Elgato franchise. Although they look like they're made for the Mac, they're really made for Windows and Mac was always just an afterthought. I had the HD60, the HD60+, Plus, the Camlink, and all of them failed me in one way or another. And all the pro-level capture cards which Elgato makes won't even run on a Mac. Not even if you have a Mac Pro or an external PCI Express enclosure. Elgato simply just does not make the drivers for Mac. So what happened with the cam link? Overheating. Uh, six minutes and four seconds the camera cam link started to turn itself off and on. At six minutes. All right, I just want to say that the cam link actually runs really hot. If I take a measurement over here, I can see that it's at 47.5. That's almost 50 degrees, whereas the computer is uh, 35, uh, almost ambient temperature. So yeah, the cam link gets really hot. And because of that, I get blank screen. It turns off and the signal doesn't go through and then it turns itself back on. Not the best experience. And as of making this video, unfortunately, I had to return the cam link back to Amazon as a defective product because it just simply doesn't work. I can't show you a video that has black holes in it, 
But in Canlink's defense, I want to say that this error started occurring maybe only about two months after I've been using this capture card. So yeah, if you're considering of getting one, maybe get a new one, not secondhand. But anyways, that's Camlink. What about the Aver Media card? And now we have the Live Gamer Ultra plugged in at 4K. Hey, future Nick here, just want to say that this happens a lot. Check this out. Uh, this is happening on Live Gamer Ultra. It happens in Wirecast and OBS, doesn't matter which codecs I use. The capture card just sometimes does this. But if you were to restart it, then look, everything works again normally. So yeah, that happens. Uh, the frame rate drops drastically and the colors can't keep up with the image. And it's just a strange effect. But once again, if you unplug the card and then replug it back in again, usually it resolves the problem and you can see it most of the time in advance. Although that being said, I did lose a few good shots. On the plus side, it doesn't overheat. As a matter of fact, it's the coolest device that I have lying around here. It has a tiny little fan inside, which is completely inaudible, but it does do something strange with the resolution scaling. For example, I couldn't get 4K to work in ScreenFlow, but it worked fine with all the other apps though. So to sum up, I'm not trying to claim anything, I'm just showing that 4K 30 works on my MacBook Air. It's the 8 GPU core and 16 GB of RAM, but it works. And if you have any troubles, try downloading the Wirecast app and see if your capture card works there, as I found this app to be the most stable out of all that I've tried. Does cost $600 if you want to buy it though. And if you're using OBS, I'm including the settings which I'm using for recording. Other than that, I want to say that I'm going to put all the links about everything I talked about down in the description below, so feel free to check it out. And if you want to buy something, you can use one of those links, which is going to help me create more videos like this. Also, you can see I'm kind of new to YouTube, so give me a like and a subscribe and maybe spread this word around so that I can make more videos like this. And of course, if you have any questions or problems with the capture cards, leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to help. And I'm making other videos at the moment on how to use ScreenFlow, so subscribe if you want to see that. This has been Nick for Angry Reviews, and I'll see you next time.